Hi, hello and welcome from wherever you join me today. Yes, it's me again, Jim Black from the Three Hats Stage Media Channel. Trying to provide entertaining content media for all the world's stages. This is a pause for thought edition where I review one of my favourite movies and see what messages we can take from it and how we could use those insights in today's busy lives. All the movies come from over the past several decades, some you may know and some you may not. They're all from a screenplay or book, have a great cast and a fantastic soundtrack. As you can see from the light box to my side, today's movie is no exception. It's 1997 and it's Jackie Brown. It's from a book by Elmore Leonard and it's adapted for the screen by the one and only Quentin Tarantino. You've got Pam Greer who plays Jackie Brown and you'll know her from Mars Attacks, Escape from LA and Foxy Brown. There's Samuel L. Jackson, he plays Ordell Robbie and you'll know him as Nick Fury, he was also in Star Wars and he's Frozone in The Incredibles. There's Robert De Niro, but what would be your favourite movie? There is so many to choose from. Bridget Fonda is in this. She's first appeared with her dad Peter in Easy Rider as one of the children in the commune. She's uncredited though. Robert Forster, he plays Max, and you'll know him because he repairs vacuum cleaners. Well, in Breaking Bad he does. Michael Bowen, he's in this, He's a police officer, and he was Uncle Jack in Breaking Bad as well. Then you've got Chris Tucker. It's only a small part he's got right at the beginning of the movie, but he went on to be in all the Rush Hour films with Jackie Chan. So I ask, is it right? If you think you deserve something, should you have it, even if you know it's wrong? And aren't there always more than one side to every story? Let's get right into this review and find out. Have you ever felt that you deserve more. Others seem to get it without even trying. And all the work you sometimes put in, others get that too and take all the rewards. Why does that happen? Are they taking things that they shouldn't be? Usually people climb for different reasons. Some it's due to hard work and others just seem to get it handed on a plate or they take it off that plate when it's offered to them. Moral dilemmas, however, are with us all the time. It's how we live our lives. You know, right and wrong. If you find money in a street, for example, or a parcel gets delivered twice, is that wrong to keep it? You know, if you do give it back, or hand the money in, that could be more trouble than it's worth. So right and wrong in that case, well, I'll leave that up to you. In this movie, Jackie Brown has a dilemma. It's sort of a moral one, but she's fed up now. She's at an age where she's done so much, all the people around her have took off her completely, and all she gets is nothing, apart from all the hard work that she has to put in to please everybody else. This movie is about three different stories, but it's all the same one. It's just shown from different views. So let's have a look and see what happens as we move through this movie and get right into this plot. It's a movie that moves about. Each section seems to be labelled just so you understand what story it is that we're in. It's a Quentin Tarantino film, so you've got to expect it's an adult theme and there is a little bit of violence and wrongdoing in it. But it's one of his lesser ones, so that makes it okay. And it's also a good story and it comes from a book. First of all, we see Jackie Brown. It shows you what she does. She's an air stewardess, and she's at the airport going off to somewhere in Mexico. Then we see Ordell, and we see his apartment and the people that's around him. He sells guns, by the way, and not the type that you can buy over the counter. Big guns that can kill lots of people, and that's how he makes his money. He lives with Mel and his mate, Louis. He gets a phone call, and the next thing we see is a bail bond office where Max Cherry runs the operation from. Ordell talks to him. He wants to put up a bond to get his friend, or so he says, out of jail. It's a 10,000 pound bond, Max agrees to it because obviously it's a living for him and he makes some money out of it. 
Beaumont gets released. Odell goes to visit him. And this is where he lets him go. And we'll say that because that's the best way to do it. Next we see Jackie Brown arriving back at the airport, LAX. But as she's walking through the airport, she gets approached by two people. One's a federal agent called Ray, and the other one's Mark, who works for the LAPD. They take her to one side. They know what she's up to. She's smuggling money in for Ordell. They want a deal with her, but she doesn't want to deal. So she gets remanded in custody and put in jail. Ordell has to go back and see Max again. Another bond, more money this time, but Max agrees to do it. And the next thing we see is Jackie gets released and Max picks her up. They go off for a drink, they chat over things. They seem to form some sort of bond, although that's what Max thinks anyway. And when Max has dropped Jackie off at home, the next thing we have is Ordell. He's visiting Jackie because he wants to terminate her employment, if you know what I mean. You'd be glad to know he doesn't terminate her employment. So at least that's one good thing. She tells him all about what's happened because that's what he wants to know. She says that she can sort it all out if he will let her. He sort of agrees. And the next thing we have is back at the LAPD office where Jackie's going to make some sort of deal. She tells the feds and the LAPD all about the deal. They agree to it in principle, as long as it's tested out first to see if it all works. She enlists the help of Max, who gladly helps her because obviously he's fallen for her. There's some backstories going on in and around it, because obviously we keep flitting from one story to another. So you see the relationships building within the little groups that they are. So you'll see Louis and Mel and Ordell, how it all works for them in their lives. And you'll see how the bond begins to form between Jackie and Max. You'll also see the feds and the LAPD side of it. We're going to move the story forward a little bit because, you know, all these bits take time and it's quite a long movie. So everybody's seen that it works. So now the big deal can happen. And this is all Jackie's plan. And you've got to remember, she's telling each of the separate groups what's going to happen. So is she telling them all the same thing? Well, we just have to wait and find out. So let's tell you about the deal. The deal is that he wants, or Dell that is, half a million dollars bringing in. Jackie says she can do it. She says that the feds are going to let her do it because they want to catch Ordell. But she can make sure that Ordell doesn't get caught. He agrees. Don't know why, because that doesn't sound good to me. But, you know, half a million dollars, that's going to do a lot for a lot of people. So the stage is now set. We're going to use the shopping mall, a big department store, and there's going to be some changing rooms. This is where the deal is going to take place. The idea being that Jackie leaves something in the changing rooms Somebody else goes in and everything's been swapped. Mel and Louie are the ones that have to go in and pick up the parcel. They pick it up and you see them going out the shopping mall. This is where you see each of the stories being acted out. It's very clever, the storytelling. And although you see it from three different points of view, it's the same story at the end of the day. Mel and Louie take the bag and off they go to the car. Next we see the Fed's point of view. They believe they can catch the perpetrators, well actually Mel and Louie, and then everything gets cleared up and it all links back to Ordell. What we don't know is that what's happening with Jackie Brown, because she's obviously orchestrated all this and she wants all that money for herself. Did I tell you that? Hmm, okay, well I've told you now. So the idea is that Max goes back into the changing room because there's a second bag. The second bag is picked up with the remainder of the money, the big part of it, and it goes back to his office with Jackie. Ordell is livid, absolutely furious. He knows that Mel and Louis didn't pick up the money. They only got 40,000. The feds know that they didn't pick up the money because they found them and they didn't have the money on them. So what will happen back at the bail bond office? Because the setup now is that Ordell will go and see Jackie there because she's frightened and lost, and Max is protecting her. Spoiler alarms are going to go here, because we don't want to tell you, because I never do. 
only to say that all the parties are there and there's a shootout. But what will happen next? Who will know? You'll have to watch the movie to find out. Moral dilemmas aren't often like this and don't usually involve half a million dollars. You've got to decide what's right and wrong for you and make those decisions. Maybe the smaller versions, you know, the finding the money in the street, the getting the wrong change in a supermarket or something. Those are just little things that happen and it's human nature. How many stories are in your life? Have you looked at them from different points of view? You know, let's take home, for example, you've got the children's view of their story that's happening. You've got your view of the story that you're happening as the mum. Then you've got the father's point of view. And that's a different story because he's got a different life to what everybody else has. All lives interconnect and all stories that end always have new beginnings. Live your life as best you can. Ups and downs all the time. But it doesn't matter. Life's like that. It's not a race. It's a marathon. Pace it out and enjoy it. The trivia in this movie is really good. Did you know that Robert Forster was asked to come for a dinner at a restaurant with Quentin? He gave him the script and said, you're doing this movie. And that's the end of it. Robert agreed. And he's very pleased that he did because he was Oscar nominated for his role in this movie. Did you know that the white Honda Civic from 1980 is the car that Jackie Brown is driving? But did you also know it's the same car that Bruce Willis drives in Pulp Fiction? Bet you didn't know that. In the book by Elmore Leonard, Jackie's name is Burke and not Brown. Quentin changed it because he was so amazed with Pam Greer's performance in Foxy Brown. And the final bit of trivia, the best bit I think, is did you know that Quentin Tarantino always appears in every one of his movies? It's only usually a cameo part, but where did he appear in Jackie Brown? Well, for those of you that don't know, he's the voice on Jackie's answer machine when her and Max are in the apartment. That's a good bit of trivia, I think. The music in this movie is just out of this world. You should download the soundtrack just for that alone even if you don't watch the movie. You've got the Delphonics, and I didn't know about them until I heard this movie. There's Bill Withers. You've got Bobby Womack, across 110th Street. You've got Strawberry Letter 23. You've got Pam Greer even singing in it. And my favorite song of all is by Johnny Cash, and it's Tennessee Stud. And it's worth it just for that alone. I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you want to know where my thoughts and inspirations come from, please click on the links in the bio below and they'll take you for a closer look. If you want to subscribe to our channel and join our community, please hit the button and hit the bell if you want to know when the next one's been uploaded. Comments are always welcome. Drop them below and I will get back to you as and when I can. And I've been Jim Black for the Three Hats Stage Media channel for this edition of Pause for Thought. See you again soon.